so welcome to column number two for uh, my no treble series on creative bass lines so today i've got a little thing for you uh, really over an e dominant seven you could uh play a little accompaniment with an e7 sharp nine in there with a g natural on the top give it a little crunchier kind of sound too uh there's a few variations on this groove which i thought would be interesting to check out and the real sort of uh payoff on this is example d you've got four different examples a b c d here the basic core line is at letter A. Then you've got B, which is could be like a reintro, sort of a breakdown, a redux of that idea. Letter C is again another variation, just a little sparser than the initial line at A. And the letter D, I've changed the basic two-bar phrase and elongated it into a four-bar phrase. There's a written explanation with this too that you can get, which I talk through as well. So let's just check out the line. I'll put a little drum groove on, and you can see what you think and we'll take it from here, all right? So here's a little groove. Two, three, and. And so on. Now, this line contains a few elements that could trace back to some of the guys I've listened to and checked out over the years, people like Bernard Edwards, Paul Jackson. Use of uh, the very beginning of the line, the minor third, the G, or the sharp nine, and immediately I go up to the major third, the G sharp, in that line, and then drop down to the low D. It's kind of an effective device that it creates a little bit of kind of grease to the line because there's a slight microsecond, like a 16th note of tension with the, the flat three or sharp nine going up to the major third. And if it's over an E7, that works really nicely. Then you'll notice I play a C sharp up to a D. So this is really, you could say, if you wanted to reduce it to a, a chord scale that would go with this, you could say, well, it's already derived from the mixolydian mode with just a little passing note, which you could do. The use of that, the sixth, the major sixth, the C sharp, not a flat, not a flat six, is really very commonly used, a lot of funk stuff. And that, that, degree of the scale of the C sharp but it just adds a little more color it's it's an extension to the basic chord so even in the line for a short second like that it really sounds nice you get that idea of that okay so we've seen how in the first example at letter A where I've given you the basic chord line letter B is just a redux of that with adding some space to the groove which is interesting and then at letter C I've missed out the idea on, on the second beat of the bar, just to add even more space, but still give you the basic core line. So you can hear how they all sound. So here's, here's letter B. Two, three, four. One, two, three. Two, three, four. One, two, three. Two, three, four. So that's pretty sparse. And that might be cool as a middle section or something. Now, let us see, I bring back a little more of the original line. Check it out. One, two, three, four. And so on. So that way, I'm not playing the little C sharp to D, so you can get that flavor to it, but it can be nice to vary this sometimes. Now, letter D is the most interesting thing. And what I'm doing here, and I put this in the written explanation too, is I've taken that two bar phrase, the basic line at A, and what I've done, if you notice, on the second bar of letter D, and it's a four bar phrase at, at D, on the second bar, I start that phrase, instead of on the first beat of the third bar, which is where you'd expect, I start at a beat early on beat four, of the second bar of letter D. It completely displaces now the line. So I do that for the first two beats of the line. And you'll see it creates this sort of moment of what? But it comes back nicely. I resolve it with beats three and four of bar three, where I come back to the original placement of the second half of the line. So you'll see. And then there's a little kind of homage to um, Paul Jackson with the ascending tenths, almost like something I took from my watermelon man or something. So check it out. So here it is, letter D, all right? And 
and so on. So that way, now to me, the line has a lot more interest to it because of that little displacement thing. It's still got a nice groove and a nice pocket to it, but now you create a little surprise for the listener as well. And the drums don't have to follow that. They could, but sometimes it's cooler if they don't. So suddenly the bass line just turns around and then comes back. Let me play that for you one more time. All right, here we go. Here we go. So there it is, that's the line. So have fun with that, check that out. You notice too what I did that last time through, instead of playing from the G to the G sharp down here, I actually went up here to the octave above. And that can be kind of effective too. I don't do that too much because I always want to drop back down and, and give some foundation to it. But it can be nice as the variation you get. And then here. So, on. so check it out. Any questions, you can always leave a message. And don't forget to check out rufusphilpot.com for lessons and more.